What's going on everyone? My name is Jack. Welcome to another installment of Cannabis Knowledge. Today we're going to be diving into a more intricate detail about humidity and temperature and how you can control those two variables to get a better efficiency within your grow room. Now when talking about temperature and humidity, let's first dive into what humidity means for a plant. So when we talk about humidity, we're talking more so about the relative humidity of a room. And most growers know this, that you should have a temp gauge with, that's equipped with a hygrometer that also tells you the relative humidity in that given area. And so when you see that percentage, that is your relative humidity in your room. So what does this humidity mean in terms of the plant's necessities? If say for instance, the humidity is at 65%, um, we know that the humidity of that room is at a 65% uh, capacity for the relative humidity at that given temperature. And so we can use that knowledge to then be able to decipher exactly how much our plant will be transpiring. So how does this relate to transpiration? Well, if you think about a plant in terms of cannabis and many other plants in the world, if not mostly all of them, um, there's these little guard cells underneath the leaves called stomata. And what these cells do is help exchange gases with the environment. Now you might be thinking, well water isn't a gas, but in terms of plants, that's exactly what they do. When they bring that water up through their roots, the water and nutrients will then move through their shoot system and outside of their leaves. The water is transformed into water vapor. And when that is left out through the stomata, it opens up a little hole within the leaves to allow gas exchange in terms of CO2. So that is why you have your CO2 tanks or you have your propane burning because that allows, when it, the plant transpires, the CO2 will come in. And the CO2 is used to create all of those sugars and beautiful things that we see on plants. These sugars also help to develop the buds and flowers that we grow in cannabis. It also helps to develop those trichomes, which is essentially sugar, because if you've ever touched cannabis buds, those are super, super sticky buds. So with all this stuff, you know, humidity, and temperature, and gas exchange, wouldn't it be cool if we could just balance these to perfectly allow the plant to exchange with the environment and also be perfectly comfortable while giving you the best potential efficiency for your plant growth, I think that would be pretty awesome. And so what we're talking about today is exactly that. It's called Vapor Pressure Deficit or VPD. So what is a Vapor Pressure Deficit? Well, we have to think of it in terms of the capacity for the environment to hold a certain amount of humidity at a given temperature. And the deficit comes from when you subtract that from the amount of vapor pressure or vapor within a given leaf of cannabis. And so to make it simple, we can't go to every single leaf in our grow room because some, you know, they're in the shade or some are in the heat. Um, you kind of have to just give it a generalization. However, you know, if you want to perfect it, you can do as many samples as you want and perfectly capture the amount of VPD in your room. So how do you find this? You have to get, number one, the temperature of your room, the air temperature, and then you can find the temperature of your leaves, the given leaf for your um, data. And then you wanna find the relative humidity for a given area or your room or your greenhouse, wherever you're trying to um, figure this out. So why are we gonna use this method? Well, you have to think in terms of the capacity for the room in terms of relative humidity. Say the room is a bit warmer, like around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, then you know that it has a larger capacity for humidity to be within that room because warmer air is able to hold more moisture. But you might be thinking, why is that? Well, think in terms of the air molecules themselves. If there's a huge gap between the air molecules. We know that there's more moisture that can fit within that given area of molecules. But if the, if the room is colder, the molecules are closer together and there's not much moisture that could fit with inside, you know, closer molecules. So you have to think in terms of that. So the warmer uh, the room, the more air or room there is for uh, moisture itself. 
we have to think, okay, if the room has a larger uh, capacity for humidity, say, you know, we have humidity that's really high, the plants want to naturally reach the state of equilibrium where they match exactly where that room humidity can be at. They want to be able to get there. So what the plants will do is they'll naturally transpire the water that you're giving them to meet the, the capacity. Because if you go back to basic science class, gases want to fill from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And that's just basics of diffusion. So when you think of that, you want to be able to perfectly allow the plants to transpire, but you don't want them to transpire too much. And like I said uh, earlier, when the plants are transpiring, that allows for more CO2 to be brought in, which also allows for more uh, big buds or, um, you know, just bigger tissues in general. But also, like I said, you don't want the plants to be in this state where they're constantly working to transpire into the environment. So that's where knowing exactly what should be done is very, very important. You don't want the plants to be transpiring if they're if they're not ready to be transpiring heavily and you don't want them to be trying to work on this and then therefore you're st stressing them out so what can be done well we know that um, with certain stages of life in cannabis that there's many different opportunities to to allow for different humidities and different temperatures because uh, everybody kind of knows that when you're in the veg stage of growing cannabis, that um, you know the humidity should be relatively high, the uh, temperature should be a little bit warmer, but you don't really understand why that is. Um, and that kind of goes into what we're talking about with uh, VPD. When it comes to the very early stage, you don't want them to be transpiring as much. But we know that as they grow older and older throughout the late um, late veg stage to the early uh, bloom stage and then so on to the uh, mid to late veg uh, bloom stage that they can begin to handle more transpiration rates. So that's exactly what you have to be applying to this new thought process. So in the beginning when you first get your plants and they're in the veg stage then they can they can't really handle that much transpiration. You just got to give them the, the right amount of nutrients. You're not watering them as much. Um, you're just allowing them to kind of acclimate to the environment and they're also kind of, you know, growing as they go. And then when you get to the bloom stage, you know that you, know that you have to kind of uh, decrease the amount of humidity while also you might even change the, the lighting system from LEDs to um, the HPS bulbs and that then will allow different color spectrums and different ways of photosynthesis to, to occur and you're also allowing higher temperatures or even relatively lower temperatures um, like in the mid 70s to high 70s and with that because of the change in temperature and humidity you notice that they're starting to drink a little bit more of water. But this continues until you get older and older in your plant cycle, plant life cycle. This is exactly where you can start to figure out how much you should tinker the humidity with the temperature. So you might have been guessing from, from this point on that, you know, what your humidity and temperature should be at. When I talk about these methods, you might be wondering how exactly you can tinker these humidity and temperature rates, but you might not be sure exactly what you need to do. And this is exactly where VPD comes in, because when you calculate this, it's in terms of the kilopascals. It's a pressure exerted on the um, surface of the plants, on the plant leaves. So then that can allow for gas exchange at the environment, as I mentioned earlier. So VPD itself is a deficit. That is, it is disproportional to relative humidity. If there is a high amount of vapor pressure being exerted onto the plants, they are not transpiring as much because they can't open the stomata to allow water out because there's already enough water in the environment. And when I talk about water, I'm just strictly talking about water vapor because you're not going to be seeing water droplets or rainfall or anything. We're just strictly talking about gas of water. And so now we got to think about if there is a lower 
um, vapor pressure being exerted on the plants, meaning there's not as much pressure from vapor being applied onto the bottom of the leaves, then that can allow perfect amount of transpiration, even high amounts of transpiration, because like I said, it all goes back to allowing that equilibrium to be met with the plants and the environment. So why temperature? What does temperature have to do with the relative humidity in the room and VPD in general? Temperature allows for a larger capacity or lower capacity of relative humidity in general. So it goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. If you have a warmer environment, there's more space for moisture to be within the molecules of the air. If you have colder temperature, it's really compact then moisture cannot really fit inside of those molecules. And that's essentially why temperature fits into this equation. So now what I'm going to discuss and show you, I have a few articles down below that talk about uh, the vapor pressure deficit, as well as a Wikipedia article that um, tells you about the equation that's used to figure out what your particular VPD is. And we can kind of uh, talk more about how this equation fits into VPD as well as what you can do to use your specific parameters to better fit how you would uh, use, use this to your advantage. So let's go over to the computer and then we'll talk more about that. Alright guys, we're over by the computer now. So what I have here is, I got this from justforgrowers.com. I'll have the article down, down below in the description as well as many other articles. Um, so what they overlaid here is you can actually download this for yourself. They have um, different charts for when uh, you have a one degree differential between the air temperature and the leaf temperature and then a two degree and they're talking in terms of uh, Celsius. So we'll do the two degree uh, differential. They also have a VPD calculator. So if you plug in exactly what uh, your air temperature is and your plant temperature is and the relative humidity. So if you put in 50%, um, let's say, yeah, let's say this is about 26, maybe even 25. And then we say, yeah, this is 28, sure. So outputs this VPD, and I believe this is in kilopascals or, yeah. So this is Pascal, so this must be in kilopascals. And you can see what the equation is here, and it also be in the Wikipedia article that I put below as well. So once you get this VPD, you can keep that in reference. Um, it just makes it easier if you know your air temperature, your plant temperature, and the relative humidity um, for yourself, so you can kind of see where you're at. But um, if we go to the two degree one here, we can kind of play around with exactly what we're looking for. So um, they have the rates for low transpiration, a healthy transpiration, high transpiration, and the danger zone indicated by the respective colors. Um, and you kind of want to shoot for this, these, these ranges um, depending on um, what stage of life your plants are at. So as you can see here, they have the propagation and early veg stage. They have the late, to, late veg to early flower and then just late flower. And possibly also mid flower and you can tell that as the plant progresses they can handle more and more transpiration rates um, so let's go for um, right now I'm in late flower so I can kind of look at exactly what we need to uh, aim for here so it ranges from 0 degrees Celsius to 39 degrees Celsius obviously plants can't survive and in these in these high and low temperatures so you're kind of aiming for around 27 to you know 20 24 is a little too low maybe 25 to 28 degrees celsius um so let's just shoot for the middle around 26 27 and then you just kind of you just go over um and this this happens to be the relative humidity at given percentages and you just follow, okay, uh, my, my uh, relative humidity at my room is about 55%. Um, and it's at 27 degrees, so you just follow it over. Right there. Perfect. So you can see that if your relative humidity is at 55% and your temperature is around 28 or 27 degrees Celsius, 
you're in a, a very high transpiration rate. So if you're in the late veg or early flower veg, uh, flower um, area, then you know that that's a little too high of transpiration for your plants. So you kind of want to back off on the transpiration by increasing the humidity to around 56 and you can even go as far as 66 percent if you're at this specific temperature so this is what i was saying before when um temperature plays a huge role in allowing more humidity into the environment so as you can see as temperature rises right here we're at 34 degrees celsius it allows for higher um, humidity to be within that environment. So you can get all the way up to 74% uh, humid, relative humidity in the room at 34 degrees Celsius and 67%. Uh, and that's for um, like late veg and early flower. But again, 34 degrees is fairly, fairly warm. So you kind of want to back off and um, keep it in the, in the mid ranges, mid 70 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, and so when you kind of, uh, you can tinker with this to get exactly where you need to be. And this will keep the efficiency of your plants at the perfect point. Um, and so, yeah, just keep, uh, you can um, figure out where to download this. Um, I'll have a link below. And you just tinker around with this. Um, again, humidity and temperature play a huge role in allowing your plants to be as efficient as possible. And it, it, it's really important that you get that you get the right um, tools for your, the success of your grow. And this, I believe, is not just for cannabis, it can be for any plant that you're, um, that you're growing in an indoor environment. So just stick with this stuff. Um, obviously, if you, know, you have more tools that can analyze temperature more uh, efficiently or in a better sense, then you can tinker with exactly how high your humidity should be or how low it should be and um, yeah hopefully you get good results from this so i hope that uh, has been an informative video for you guys please feel free to subscribe and like the video if you want more content like this in the future hope you guys have a good day see you later